You're listening to the Bumbling Golfer Podcast. Hey everybody, what's going on? This is John at the Bumbling Golfer Podcast. Uh, this is episode number three. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a product that I was introduced to uh, or introduced to uh, through Instagram. So almost all of the stuff that I do or use or anything like that will end up coming through some sort of social media. Um, I'm not a big company guy, if that makes sense. So like TaylorMade, Titleist you know, Mizuno, all that. I think they have fantastic products, but I'm a, I like to support the, the smaller companies if possible, or maybe the lesser known brands. Um, and, um, really, really, it, it, it has more to do with the price point than it does anything. I, at one point, and, and I'll have this conversation, I'll talk about my journey through golf and, having some products out there in the marketplace and having my own brand and, and why I had it. So anyway, I like to use companies that are smaller, um, maybe a little bit more nimble. Um, and, you know, buying something from them makes a big impact. It's not just some, some number, arbitrary number. So anyway, uh, today I'm going to talk about a range finder. And those of you who know me um, or have watched any of the, um, I guess any of my YouTube videos will see that I always use my phone. I use 18 birdies for virtually everything. I think the app is fantastic. Um, I actually think it has, you have a huge advantage if you're using it. And again, I'm, I'm playing competitive golf, but it's not, it's not like, it, it's not a, like a cheating thing. So anyway, I play on the AGS tour and, and, um, a lot of people use 18 birdies. It's really just a way to have a better time and, and, and really dial yourself in. So anyway, and maybe that'll change down the road. I don't know. However, um, a young man out of Canada reached out to me. His name's Christian Meliambro. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Christian, I apologize if I'm not saying it right, but you know, a last name like Kelly's a lot easier to, um, pronounce than yours. But anyway, uh, Christian is actually a professional golfer out of Canada, and I'll just give you a quick background on him. Um, he played various competitive sports, including hockey and golf. That's generally most Canadian people, I believe. Uh, I know a lot of golfers that actually were uh, hockey players at one point. So um, he played a lot of his junior golf uh, in Ottawa, and um, and then he also played down here in the U.S., um, just really to take it to the next level. So he worked with a lot of, um, world-class teaching professionals in both Ottawa and Florida and, um, really got good. So, um, he is a, uh, as I said, he's, I, I believe he's a teaching professional. Um, but he actually played golf. He got a scholarship, uh, to Johnson and Wales in Miami, Florida, uh, while studying business. So that's, that's pretty cool. And his freshman year, um, the school finished fourth in national championships. I don't know, um, what division that is, but, uh, he was named a Sun Conference all American, um, I'm sorry, Sun Conference all academic American, uh, while still playing on the golf team. So again, that's, that's pretty, you know, it's pretty admirable, right? So student athletes, they don't really have it easy. So, Anyway, Christian reached out to me on Instagram. He started following my Instagram page and he said, Hey man, I have a new rangefinder coming out. So um, it's called Eye Gauge. And uh, he basically runs it mostly through his Instagram and his TikTok. So if I go to his Instagram, and you can you can find this yourself, there is a there is a um there's a link on there. Actually, it's on his homepage, uh, Christian Meliambro golf.com. Um, I'll put a link, uh, in the description below, but this range finder, it's actually really nice. I, I I've never had one. Um, but this, this one's actually pretty nice. I've, I've used a few of them here and there. Again, I'm not a big range finder guy. I'd rather just look at, you know, look at like a map. Um, but one day my phone died and I said, Oh, you know what? Let me, let me give this a shot. So, so I did. And, um, 
it's actually really nice. So I'll show you a picture in a second. And like I said, I'll have a link to this in the description and I'll put this on my Instagram as well. So uh, it states here, introducing our new eye gauge series one rangefinder. Again, this is the first one he's putting out. Um, it features a slope switch, which, you know, is good. Um, crystal clear optic quality, advanced flag lock, um, a yard to meter switch, uh, 655 yards uh, of range. And here's the kicker, and I didn't realize how big of a deal this is, but the most important part about this is that it runs on triple A batteries. Um, what makes it it makes it just a lot more convenient and quite frankly more cost effective. I didn't know that the batteries for most rangefinders, and I can't say for all of them, there are CR2 batteries, and two of them are like 13 bucks, 14 bucks on Amazon, something like that. But I mean I can't tell you how many times I look for batteries for something that are triple A or double A or whatever it is. It's not like back in the day when you needed like $40 worth of D batteries to put in your, your boom box for those of you who uh, are old enough to remember that. But anyway, so this, again, this, it runs on triple A batteries. And to me, that seems like the most convenient thing because triple A batteries, you may or may not have them uh, around the house, but, so as I look at this, I can't remember how many there are in there, but I'll take a peek. So it's two, two AAA batteries. I've had these in there for about a month. And here in Pennsylvania, the the um, golf season is, mm, I guess it goes from about April till November, maybe late October for most people. But I try to look, if it's above 40 degrees, I'm playing golf. So anyway, um, I take it out of my bag and I'm like, you know, trying to figure it out because, you know, like a typical guy, I didn't really read the instructions. Um, so I'm goofing around with it and um, we even without the instructions, I figured it out pretty easily. So um, so what I did is I used that for the rest of the round. Actually, I charged my phone in my uh, golf cart. Shout out to all the golf cart manufacturers for putting USB uh, ports in their carts. Um, but again so i started using this and and you know i what i started doing is i started really this this season i started taking a lot more or paying a lot more attention to my my yardages right so uh shout out to the scramble house justin rhinus and his crew um the absolute best indoor golf facility i mean i i would challenge it with any indoor golf facility the experience, there's no bar. I, I'm going to do a whole thing on that. I'm going to have Justin on here too. So anyway, so I go to, and I hit on Foresight. Um, is Foresight? I think it's Foresight. I can't remember. Justin's going to kill me. Anyway, I hit on uh, these monitors and I do a lot of sim golf, really just trying to groove my swing and get better and really learn how to hit a golf ball the right way. So uh, pretty dialed with my yardages. So again, I take out this range finder. Again, this is eye gauge. Uh, this is series one. Um, and I start using it. And believe it or not, it was a lot easier for me to use. The problem for me is this. My phone fits in my pocket. And it's really easy for me to put my phone in my pocket. Pull it out, look at the yardage and go. Um, this here, I will say from a rangefinder perspective, and this is nothing, this is not eye gauge specific. This is any rangefinder. I coach golf, high school golf, and my players would lose their range finders. We'd have to go pick them up. They're a bit clunky. You know, they're, you know, they're not easy to just put in your pocket. Uh, there's generally a case for them and the case you have to zip up or you have to like, it's just kind of a pain overall. But, um, and the one thing I did find, I was playing golf with my buddy, Shane, uh, and my buddy Brian and my buddy Ken and Ken was in my cart and his, um, his range finder, I don't remember what one it was, but it had like a, a magnet on it. So that's one thing I think if I can, maybe I can probably find a magnet, just stick it on this and it's not a big deal, but, um, anyway, uh, Christian reached out to me. He said, Hey man, I have this brand new thing. Would you will, are you willing to give it a shot? I'm like, yeah, man, no problem. Um, but again, those of you who know me, I'm a big business. Like I want people to make money. 
I don't want people to not make money. And I don't have enough pull to say, hey, send me something for free and I'll test it. That's not who I am. And 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 again, I'll tell you why probably in a later episode. But just, you know, if you hear this, just know that there's more more coming um, on why I am that way. So anyway, um, I believe it was, again, Christians in Canada. So the total cost for me was $279 dollars and 99 cents Canadian. So that equates to let me do the math real quick. Um and and to me, you know, I want I want him to make money. So that ended up being $204.33 US dollars. Again, a little steep in price, not going to lie. However, I believe that that was shipping and everything included. So you know, if you look at some of these websites um, and and take a look around at what people are buying these for, and some of them are 200, some of them are bigger uh, or, or higher numbers. Uh, for me, I didn't really think it was a bad deal. I'm just popping up Amazon right now. So there's some range finders that are similar for, you know, some for 109 bucks. Again, I don't know, it has a lot of stars on it. There are some that are even less. I apologize. These allergies are driving me nuts. Um, so let me look. I just typed in range finder, not golf range finder. So let me pull those ones up. Uh, Blue Tees seems to be a pretty popular one. But there, you know, there's a Callaway one here for 191 bucks. Uh, there's some really, really um, inexpensive ones. So anyway, back to this one here. So Christian reached out. He said, hey, would you like to try this? I said, yep, no problem. Now, um, it took a little bit to get, but again, he, I think I got the first kind of trial or not, not trial run. I think I got the first run of these and, and I think he had quite a few people waiting on them. So anyway, uh, I get it. I go out on the course. Like I said, my phone died. I pull this thing out and I start shooting targets and I'll tell you what, it was, it was pretty impressive. The only Again, there's there's a few things that really bother me about range finders, and this is not specific to this eye gauge one. Um, I actually I really do like this a lot. Um, I didn't have like a yard. I didn't. I guess I didn't have like a. Um, I don't know what they're called. It's like the book. It's like the course book or whatever it is, where it shows you like where the greens are, how deep they are, all that kind of stuff. So I, I like that about 18 birdies. But anyway, I'm I'm getting a little off track here. So I pull this this eye gauge range out or range finder out and it's shooting flags. Um I'm able to shoot different targets. Um again, it's 655 yards, which is great. Um anything like I don't know why I would need anything over 400 yards. That, that doesn't make sense to me. So um anyone who claims that they have 900, 800, 1000 yards, like that should be used probably for hunting in my opinion or some kind of you know, competition, um, shooting. So, um, yeah, really impressed with it. It was really easy to use. And, um, again, it was, you know, my first, I, it was my first one I've ever bought. I've used a few here and there. I've used a lot of like Bushnell ones. Um, I think my buddy Shane has a Bushnell one. Uh, the only thing that I liked more about that and some of the other ones that I've tried and used is the fact that, and I'll show you this right now. Um, if you're watching, this is on Spotify video as well as YouTube. So, and I have my background blurred. Sorry about that. So, um, so here's a range. Here's the here's the range finder. I'm just trying to get it in the screen. There it is. It's called Eye Gauge. Um, like I said, it's got a, a slope on and a slope off um, button right there. And the top of it is actually pretty cool. So that's the power button. And when you shoot, and then here's, you know, kind of a switch to go back and forth. On the front, it's got a couple different uh, couple different deals there. I don't know what they are. I imagine there's a laser in there somehow. Again, I'm not super technical with this, but um, this, it's really, it's really nice. So the only thing I would rather see on this, and this is something I'm sure I could do, um, is it's just, it's all plastic, right? So it's all plastic. And you see it's kind of shiny. Um, it has some, it has some, uh, like grip, uh, marks on the bottom, but again, it's all plastic. One of the things that I saw 
uh, on a few range finders because I've been paying a little bit more attention when I go out is that they have like some sort of like grippy like I don't know like a rubberish kind of thing on there because I could imagine that you know if it's raining a little bit you know this would get slippery or actually the other thing is this was sliding off the seat of the golf cart um and again there it comes with this really nice case um it fits in there really nice and it came with a um with a tether or a uh i don't know what what do you call it like a strap you could put through it uh to kind of carry it around so and it came with a uh a carabiner on top so you can actually just put it on your golf bag but again um christian i i think this is a pretty solid i think this is pretty solid i mean i think if you keep going with it um I mean, I was I was happy with it. It's I've dropped it a few times so far. The wear on it's pretty good. Um, there's a couple scratches, but if it's mine, it's going to be scratched up. Um, I don't even clean my clubs other than maybe two or three times a year. Um, but again, uh, anyone interested, go to I Gauge. Let me see here. Uh, on Instagram, it's I Gauge Golf underscore. So I G A G E g-o-l-f underscore and uh you can find it there uh, i believe he's also on tiktok but if you want to get to the um the page where you can find this and again i'll have this in the description below it's christian meliambro golf.com so it's christian m-e-l-i-a i can't even thought christian i'm having a hard time with your name bro it's christian M E L I A M B R O G O L F dot com. So it's basically like Christian Me Liam Bro Golf dot com if you want to get in touch with them. So again, um, yeah, the bumbling golfer here. I'm trying to get into some different things here. Uh, maybe do some reviews on things that I like to use. Uh, if anyone has any ideas, something that I should go out and buy, uh, check it out. That would be awesome. Um, also, just a quick shout out because this is, again, I, I like when people reach out to me and tell me about things they have. So those of you who listened to my um, my previous podcast, I had Nate Rin on the podcast. And he is a young man. It has a clothing business. It's called Acorn Hills Golf. If you look at this amazing shirt I have on right now, and if you don't see it, I'll post it on my Instagram. It's called the Scent of Pine Polo. There are some really nice pieces that he's putting out. He has some really cool stuff coming out. Make sure that you go check that out. Again, another young guy. Christian's a young dude. Nate's a young dude. Go out and support them. They're just trying to do their thing and 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 kind of get their little niche going here um in the golf world. And and Nate's actually going to be much bigger uh than the golf world for sure. And uh Christian's doing his thing. So again, I appreciate everyone listening. Um, if you want have any questions or anything like that, feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can hit me up on any of the socials. It's at the Bumbling Golfer. And um, you can hit me up. Um, by email, the bumbling golfer at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear about more of what it is that you all use out there when you're playing golf. If it's something technology, if it's, I'm big, here's, here's, I'm going to ask a question. What shoes should I try? Now, keep in mind, I don't like super expensive stuff. I have an idea. I think I'm going to join a program, an ambassador program, but. I think it might be surprising too, but anyway, um, I love Jordans. Never going to wear Jordan golf shoes; they're too expensive, and um, I'm just I'm not that guy. But um, there are some other things that might be coming out um, that I might be jumping on. So anyway, again, episode number three, the bumbling golfer here, John Kelly. I appreciate your time. Uh, more to come. Really good, fun, exciting content coming um lots more videos that kind of stuff so anyway um yeah i appreciate everyone listening 
and watching and uh i'll have some graphics up here i hope i i have them up there um about what the uh this rangefinder is and 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 maybe a little bit more about christian so anyway uh maybe i'll have him on here uh as well just to kind of give me a little bit of uh, a little bit more on his background but thank you again everyone uh john the bumbling golfer podcast episode number three thanks for listening and watching talk to you soon You've been listening to the Bumbling Gopher Podcast. Hit me up on our socials at the Bumbling Gopher. Also, hit us up at our email at the Bumbling Gopher at gmail.com.